Today, I am going to explain the revealed preference theory. In indifference curves, we used the information about the consumer's preferences and the budget constraint to determine his demand. In revealed preference theory, we are discovering information about the preferences of the consumer by the observation of his behavior. We try to develop some tools to do that from this theory. Here, we are assuming that the preferences of the consumer will remain unchanged while we observe the behavior. Over very long time spans, this assumption may not be very reasonable. But here, we adopt the assumption that consumer's preferences are stable over the time period for which we observe his choice behavior. We also assume that the underlying preferences of the consumer is strictly convex as discussed in the concept of indifference curves. Given this background, let's move on to the idea of revealed preference. Now, consider this figure where we have depicted a consumer's demanded bundle x1, x2 and another bundle y1, y2 that is beneath the consumer's budget line. Here, the bundle x1, x2 is assumed to be demanded by the consumer and it is quite clear that the bundle y1, y2 was also affordable to the consumer as it lies inside the budget line. Here, the bundle x1, x2 that the consumer chooses is said to be revealed preferred to the bundle y1, y2. That is because y1, y2 was a bundle that the consumer could have chosen as it was inside his budget line, but he didn't do so. Here, x1, x2 is considered the optimal bundle because the consumer has chosen it. It must be better than any other bundle that the consumer can afford. And x1, x2 must be preferred to any other bundle in the blue shaded area or on the budget line. Now, let's assume that x1, x2 is a consumption bundle which is purchased at prices P1, P2 when the consumer has income M. X1 is a bundle which has price P1 and X2 is a bundle which has price P2. Now, let's again have a look at this figure. It can be seen that the optimal bundle X1, X2 is on the budget line. This means that his total income is exhausted when the consumer purchases the bundle X1, X2. At the same time, when we look at the bundle Y1, Y2, it lies inside the budget line and the total income of the consumer is not being exhausted. So this means that P1, Y1 plus P2, Y2 is less than or equal to M. In our particular example, P1, Y1 plus P2, Y2 is less than M as the bundle Y1, Y2 lies inside the budget line as explained before. But the idea of revealed preference holds even if the bundle Y1, Y2 is equal to M, which means even if Y1, Y2 was on the budget line, the revealed preference theory will continue to hold as long as X1, X2 is preferred to Y1, Y2. At the same time, for the bundle X1, X2, P1, X1 plus P2, X2 is equal to M. Now, let's put these two equations together and we get the result that P1, X1 plus P2, X2 greater than or equal to P1, Y1 plus P2, Y2. That is, the total expenditure on the bundle X1, X2 must be greater than or equal to the total expenditure on the bundle Y1, Y2 for the idea of revealed preference to hold. Then only we can say that X1, X2 is directly revealed preferred to Y1, Y2. The revealed preference is a relation that holds between the bundle that is actually demanded at some budget and the bundles that could have been demanded at that budget. Here, the bundle that has actually been demanded is X1, X2 and the bundle that could have been demanded at the budget is Y1, Y2. And when we say that X is revealed preferred to Y, all we are claiming is that X is chosen when Y could have been chosen. If x1, x2 is chosen over y1, y2 or if x1, x2 is directly revealed preferred over y1, y2, then it essentially means that 
x1 x2 is preferred to y1 y2 the principle of revealed preference states that let x1 x2 be the chosen bundle when prices are p1 p2 and let y1 y2 be some other bundle such that p1 x1 plus p2 x2 is greater than or equal to p1 y1 plus p2 y2 then if the consumer is choosing the most preferred bundle she can afford x1 x2 is preferred to y1 y2 it has to be noted that just because x is revealed preferred to y doesn't mean that x is preferred to y revealed preferred just means that x was chosen when y was available preference means that the consumer ranks x ahead of y now suppose that y1 y2 is the bundle demanded by the consumer at prices q1 q2 and assume that y1 y2 is itself revealed preferred to some other bundle z1 z2 have a look at this figure where there is a shift in the budget line and the consumer now demands the bundle y1 y2 the bundle z1 z2 lies inside the new budget line when there is a shift in the budget line the relative prices changes and let's assume that the relative prices are now q1 and q2 since y1 y2 lies on the budget line it exhausts the total income of the consumer hence q1 y1 plus q2 y2 is equal to m as it exhausts the total income as per the new budget line and z1 y1 plus z2 y2 is less than or equal to m as the theory of revealed preference suggests but here since the bundle z1 z2 was inside the shifted budget line z1 y1 plus z2 y2 is less than m so combining these two equations we get that q1 y1 plus q2 y2 must be greater than or equal to q1 z1 plus q2 z2 then only the theory of revealed preference may hold we learned that x1 x2 is preferred to y1 y2 and that y1 y2 is preferred to z1 z2 so due to the assumption of transitivity we can conclude that x1 x2 is preferred to z1 z2 in this case we say that x1 x2 is indirectly revealed preferred to z1 z2 we can conclude from the figure that x1 x2 is revealed preferred to all of the bundles in the blue shaded area this is because x1 x2 is directly revealed preferred to y1 y2 as explained earlier and indirectly revealed preferred to z1 z2 so bundle x1 x2 is preferred to all the bundles in the blue shaded area now have a look at this figure where the upper shaded area consists of all those bundles that are preferred to x in fact the upper shaded area shows the better bundles when compared to the bundle x this is because of the monotonicity of preferences if we are willing to assume that preferences are monotonic then all the bundles that have more of both goods than x y and z or any of their weighted averages are also preferred to x that is why the upper shaded portion is preferred to x the lower shaded area consists of bundles revealed worse than x the region labeled worse bundles consists of all the bundles to which x is revealed preferred as i have explained earlier x is directly or indirectly revealed preferred to all the bundles in the lower shaded portion we can conclude that all of the bundles in the upper shaded area are better than x and all of the bundles in the lower shaded area are worse than x this is in accordance with the preferences of the consumer who made the choices the true indifference curve through x must lie somewhere between the two shaded sets this is because indifference curve is the locus of combination of points which gives the same level of satisfaction to the consumer so the indifference curve shouldn't lie in any of the shaded areas and it is tightly trapped in the middle of the shaded regions in the next video we will move on to the weak axiom of the revealed preference theory thank you